1400 years ago. It's the 9th of Muharram. You're in your tent and you hear noises coming from outside. Naturally, you leave your tent to see what's happening and you come outside and you see people leaving the camp of Aba Abdullah in their hundreds and thousands. Looking around at everything and everyone, for one second, your eyes fall into the eyes of Imam Hussain Alayhisselam. You see the sadness in his face. There and then you decide you're going to stay. You're not going to leave him alone. The morning comes, it's now the day of Ashura. You've now become the 73rd companion of Aba Abdullah. Imagine you walk up to the Imam and you offer yourself to him, you offer your service and he gives you the choice in what you want to do. So for example, you could go and bring water with Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. You could go and fight in the battles. You could bring back the body parts of the wounded and killed. You could protect the tents of the women and children. What would you want to do on that day? I don't know. I don't know what I should say. <laughs> it's a difficult question. I think today it's... I would say I would... go to the woman and... try to save them. To try to stop their fear, their, their tears, the children. It's, it's, it's uh, that situation what makes me most uh, sad. If I read about Karbala and what there happens, I think, I know it, the, the soldiers, both Imam Hussein, his, his friends, were like, I don't know, lions, but they had their, um, their, their work and they hadn't maybe the time to, for all of this or for, to, to protect the women. And I think I will be by, by the women and by the children. But it's, it's a difficult question. I, <laughs> I'm really thinking about it. It's a new question, interesting question. Maybe it's upon the situation. Maybe I had, I would have fear from the world, war and the the difficult situation there. I don't know. Imagine. You come home from work, you open your house door, you walk in, you see your family members running around the house. One person's bringing fruit, another person's making tea, someone else is cooking food. And you think to yourself that we have visitors or we have guests who've come to see us. So you grab someone and you say, who's come to see us, who's come to our house that everyone's running around like this and they respond to you they haven't come to see us, they've come to see you so you say okay who is it, maybe it's someone from work, maybe it's someone from school, maybe it's someone from the mosque and you go into the living room, you open the door, you walk inside and you see sitting on your chair in your living room is Imam Hussain alayhi <laughs> salam. In that situation, what would you say to him? What would you want him to say to you? Another interesting question. Wow. 
Cool. I don't really know. I will kiss him. I will hug him. I don't know. But I think I, I couldn't speak that. Any word. I mean, you, you, you see, I can't, <laughs> I can't answer the question. And I think in, th in this situation, I would cry and hug him, kiss him, and I would only feel the love. I, w I will show him my love. But uh, talking? I don't know. <laughs> well, it's a nice question. What would nice you want question. to hear from him? What would make you the happiest? For example, if he turned around and said, I've accepted you as a servant. I'm happy with everything you've done for me. You've made my grandson, Sahib Az Zaman, happy. What would you want to hear from him? <coughs> I don't know. I think it's enough when he looked to me and smiled. It's enough. I think it's all I, I wish from him. It's all of what I wish. Now it comes time for him to leave your house. You've sat down, you've talked, and he's standing up to go. What would you say to him as a farewell? What would you want from him? Maybe you might never see him again. What would you ask from him? Yeah, maybe then I would ask him if, if he is agree with me, if he accept me and what I do, what I think, what I, what I say, how I live. But if, well, I wouldn't let him leave. <laughs> Maybe I would observe him from far and walk after him to see what he would do and to be with him all the time. It's only what I wish and what I imagine how I could, would uh, react, but it's very interesting questions, very interesting questions. At the beginning, I asked you about 1400 years ago, I asked you about a day that we have some information on. So we, we know, for example, some of the things that happened on the day of Ashura. Obviously, we don't know the entirety of the tragedy, but we know enough to be able to hold the majalis and explain and teach our youth in this day and age. Now, knowing what we know of that day, it might be easy today to say, if I was there, I would stop this. If I was there, I would help this person. If I was there, I would try to control this from happening. And I said to you that you walk up to the Imam and the Imam gives you the choice. He lets you decide where you want to help and what you want to do for him. In today, in this day and age, a lot of us forget we have a 12th Imam with us. And in a way, him being physically absent from us has given us a choice in how we want to serve him, what we want to do for him. Because he's not here to say, go and bring me this or go and get that for me or go and help this person or go and stop that from happening. We can't hear him because of the amount we sin with our ears. But him being away from us gives us a choice in a way to be able to do what we want for him. So my last question is, what have you done for the 12th Imam? What do you think he deserves from you? How do you think he feels about you being one of his servants? Hmm. I would say nothing, nothing. What make me happy 
that I can say I, I help the Imam or I'm the service of the Imam. But I like handle the camera and we 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 make made some videos and some activities in the society in Germany to show the right um, way of the Imam Ahlul Bayt salam to show the the ideology of of Shism and the other schools in, uh, in Islam and I, I hope I hope he will aspect, uh, accept this this work maybe one person of this work it will be enough I, I hope he, he agree with our work but I don't know if someone came to you and asked how can I find Sahib al-Zaman how can I develop that love for him in my heart? What would you recommend for them? We, we read in the hadith that the Imam of the, or all Imams are the face of God. It's only metaphoric, but I think who is the, 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 if he are looking for God or for, for a reason to live. I think you can find the Imam because he's the face of, of God. He is the door to God and it's somebody like us is he is a human and it's make make us uh, easier to, to think about God, to think about the religion and to to understand understand all the things. I think it's it's the best way. In the Christianity we know about Jesus and um, the choose the easy way to imagine how God is and they said Jesus is God but we have the Imams and the Imam is higher than than Jesus and all the prophets except uh, the Prophet Muhammad so I think it's the best way to imagine okay he is a person um, choose from God and he is the door God say, okay, do you searching, looking for me or after um, to find me and to find the reason or the way that I want you to live like, then you have the Imam, the Imam of the time. I think it's the best way. <laughs> الا کراز خدایی خدا کند که بیایی خدا کند تو نور غیر نواییم خدا Oh, no.